today I'm going to talk about perianal fistulas. So they're also called anal uh, furunculosis. Um, so perianal regards to like the immediate area surrounding the anus and then the fistula is an abnormal connection between two tissues or vessels that normally aren't connected. Mm -hmm. And then some of us like to refer to it as frunculosis better because that's a skin condition characterized by the development of reoccurring boils. Um, so it's just an infection of the perianal region with one or more draining tracts. Um, so typically it affects middle-aged German shepherds or other dogs that have their tail kind of between their legs. You know, like a lot of the doodles that are popular now, they all have like high curled tails, so they're not at risk for this as much because there's less airflow underneath those tails. Um, it's thought that there's more infection. And then the German Shepherd breed actually has more um, apocrine sweat glands, so they produce more of like an oily sweat instead of other breeds that produce more of like a liquidy sweat. Um, so it's thought that that could have something to do with it as well. And then they're also thinking that there's a genetic factor with the German Shepherds that leads to this. Um, I chose this topic today because I work at a vet clinic in Indy and I noticed we were seeing a lot of them in shepherds, and I was curious if it was just something related to them, and it seems it might be, um, but other breeds are at risk as well. So what are they? So they're, you can kind of see in here, they're little tunnels, um, they're ulcerating, and kind of in the, that's the anus of course, so anal area. Um, they can have pus, which produces a pungent smell, and then as it progresses, instead of being just like little dots, they can grow long and bleed and other things. Um, and then it can be concurrent with inflammatory bowel disease and often there will be diarrhea associated with this and so the extra bacteria can cause a secondary infection. And recent research indicates that there might be an autoimmune disease um, associated with this and also that could be related to the genetics again. So some symptoms, um, diarrhea, straining while defecating, licking the area, blood in the stool, discharge that is kind of like clear and bloody. We had this in a border um, over the weekend and it was kind of like a dark brown with blood and then sometimes clear, it was very bizarre. Um, so then scooting, anorexia, and then agitated or even aggressive behavior because of the pain caused by this disease. And so, if you guys know anything about dogs, those are all very common symptoms to have with colitis or impacted anal glands or anything like that. So that's why you should always go to the vet with these kind of things, especially if your dog won't let you get back there and look to see what it is and let them do it professionally. So, some treatment options. Cyclosporine, so it's an oral immunosuppressant, so it will reduce the body's attack on that area and reduce the inflammatory response, um, which can further the disease. And then ketoconazole, which is an, you know, an antifungal, and those will be given together often. And then in more serious cases, we'll do the topical uh, tacrolimus, so protopic, and it's an even stronger immunosuppressant um, and it was actually originally made for humans as an oral um, to prevent bodies from rejecting organ transplants. Um, and then antibiotics if there is a secondary infection. And then they'll also do this with the hypoallergenic food trial to try and find any allergy or underlying autoimmune disease. So here's one of the less graphic pictures I found. <laughs> Um, so you can see these tracks in here, these aren't very normal. Um, sometimes they'll be even kind of just like spots like this one, and I think this one has been cleaned up since normally they'll be a little more bloody. Um, and then you can see this was a while later, and they kind of started to resolve. They're not deep anymore. There's still like a little bit of scarring, but mostly resolved, and I believe this was uh, ketoconazole and cyclosporine. I was gonna ask you what the treatment was for that. Um, 
So prognosis, it's going to be a lifelong management of the symptoms. It's going to come in waves, um, especially if the inflammatory bowel disease is present and kicks up with stress. Um, there is no known cure, just kind of treating the symptoms. So the medications on and off as needed, um, the hypoallergenic diet, and then grooming. Sometimes they think clipping the area will make for better airflow. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Caroline? Um, I, I got a question. Um, like, so a German Shepherd lives, let's say, 12, 13 years. Does it occur all through, possibly all through lifespan, or are more, more of them like middle, mid age and later, or anything um, like that? And what I read, it was mostly middle age and later, and the dog I've seen, it's been middle age, about yeah, so five or six so, years okay, old. And then so it won't it's happen managing in the, young dog. the symptoms from then right. on. Yeah, because it's chronic, long term. Right. Now, I, I might have missed at the beginning, those little fistulas, are they sweat glands or some kind of gland that's taken over by this? They can what? be. But, I mean, because I can't imagine something making a hole like you showed, you know. Yeah. What's making a hole? Honestly, I okay. don't know. Yeah, okay. It okay. just said there's different kind of tracks that can yeah. occur, and sometimes it will actually um, Mm -hmm. like connect with the anus and sometimes right. they'll be more blind because that top one there it's co connecting yeah. with the and this anal lumen thing was from like vin so okay. pretty reliable oh yeah stuff. yeah no i like that I, i've never seen that good of a picture of that stuff mm -hmm. and of course you could mi mix it up with the anal sacs right thing. and that's another thing that's another thing that has to be checked for yeah. questions comments very good topic okay